Apple has made a really great start on its new silicon. The M1 system on chip is hugely impressive, if not without its drawbacks. Uh, so the question is, where does Apple go next? Rumours abound of new machines, including the 14-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pro models, new iMacs, and I wonder if we might also get a new desktop or a more capable version of the Mac Mini. But of course, all of these things are just rumours. Apple naturally hasn't confirmed anything yet. But it does seem logical that they would look to replace these consumer and enthusiast grade machines as soon as possible. Thing is, Apple can't just slap the same M1 chip into all of these different machines. They need a hierarchy, they need an upgrade path, a reason for you to spend more money. So I think it's pretty reasonable to assume that we're going to see an upgraded M chip. And again, there are plenty of rumours about this. Spend some time browsing YouTube thumbnails and you could convince yourself that there already is an M1X chip out there. So the question is, can we make some reasonable and logical predictions on what the next chip might offer? Without getting too far into the sensationalist, clickbaity world of tech crystal ball gazing. Let's give it a try. Really, who knows what Apple will call its next M chip? M1X, M1Y, M1Z, M1 Pro, M2? Well, probably not M2. I suspect the second generation of Apple Silicon for Macs will be what starts to replace Intel in the Pro machines, perhaps at the end of this year or sometime in 2022. And maybe it'll be on TSMC's three nanometer process, which will be an exciting prospect. We'll have to wait and see on that. But for now, and for these machines we're discussing, Apple doesn't need a revolution. It needs an evolution. We already have a 13-inch M1 MacBook Pro, but of course there are two distinct models of the 13-inch. There's the two-port model and the four-port model. And I think it's reasonable to expect a new four-port model, perhaps with a larger screen and renamed to MacBook Pro 14-inch. It would need to have some additional options over the existing M1, perhaps more RAM, more ports, and maybe a little more performance in order to justify the additional expense. Likewise, the 16-inch will need at least the same level of performance and memory options. And whilst the current M1 can compete with the top 16-inch model on CPU performance, when it comes to GPU, the M1 is offering around half the performance of the top 5600M graphics card that you can spec on that machine. Apple will need a GPU which can compete. For the iMacs, we're anticipating a new design, and it's long overdue after all. I suspect it might follow the design language of the Pro XDR display. Now, the smaller model has always been more consumer focused, so actually, Apple could put the existing M1 chip into it. The larger model with the 5K screen will need something more. Like the 16 inch MacBook Pro, it's going to need more performance, and particularly more graphics performance. You can spec that existing Intel iMac with a Radeon Pro 5700 XT with 16 gigs of video RAM, and the current M1 GPU is nowhere near that performance level. And I suspect that the evolution of the M chip won't be offering that sort of GPU performance either. So it'll probably mean a step down in graphics performance for this larger iMac until that next generation chip arrives. But to meet these needs that we've just discussed, let's look at the three areas of the chip that Apple might upgrade. Starting with the memory. I think we really need to see a 32 gigabyte option, and I suspect this will be part of the revised chip. The M1 machines do amazing things considering the amount of RAM they have. Um, in traditional x86 terms, it seems almost magical, but they can't change the laws of computing physics, and there are tasks where more RAM would be greatly appreciated. So we could have a situation where we've got the M1 Max with their 8 gig and 16 gig options, and the updated M chip might offer 16 gig and 32 gig options. When it comes to the CPU, the current M1 has got four low power efficiency cores and four high performance cores. There wouldn't be much point in increasing the number of the efficiency cores, so I suspect Apple will focus on bringing a chip with more performance cores. And it would be perfectly reasonable and possible for them to double the performance cores to eight. And if they did that, what might performance look like? Well, let's use Geekbench 5 to run some numbers, starting with single core. When I tested my M1 Mini, I got a score of 1735. If we added four more performance cores to the CPU, that would probably give us a single core score of 1735. Uh, because adding more cores won't change the single core performance. But that's hardly an issue. 1735 is one of the best single core scores of any standard consumer CPU. The benefit really comes with multi-core performance. When I tested my M1 Mini, I got a score of 7583. 
So what might we expect if we double the performance cores? We probably won't get double the score. CPUs don't scale up like that. And the efficiency cores are probably having a small impact on that score as well. So what's a reasonable expectation? Let's suppose somewhere in the region of 80% improvement might be possible. And if so, that would give us a potential score of 13,649. And how would a score like that compare to existing Intel Macs? Well, if we look at the Mac benchmark chart on Geekbench, we can see the average scores from all of the tests submitted. Remember that these are average scores, so they're likely lower than the actual performance you might get if you test one of these CPUs yourself. But what we can see is that a multi-core score in the 13.5K range would put our theoretical new M chip right about the level of the top 18-core Xeon in the iMac Pro, and well ahead of the best consumer iMac with the 10-core i9. Of course, Geekbench isn't the best tool for comparing real-world M1 performance with Intel CPUs. Typically, the Intel chips perform better than the score might seem to indicate. And something else to consider is that you'll only see the benefit from additional cores if the software you're using can take advantage of them. And not all apps will scale to use all available cores. But even so, it's very clear that if Apple could achieve a performance uplift like this, they would have a very fast CPU on their hands. Now sure, there are faster desktop chips out there from AMD and Intel, uh, much faster in fact. But if Apple can put this level of performance into a mobile computer, a chip like this in a MacBook Pro would be groundbreaking and way beyond the performance of any PC notebook out there, except where graphics are concerned. Apple have got a long way to go to catch up with Nvidia and AMD, but the step they made in the M1's GPU was impressive. Bear in mind that the M1 was an evolution of the A14 iPad chip, so we are able to compare core counts and performance to a certain extent. The M1 has more memory available to its GPU, and increasing the RAM on any new M chip would likely have an effect on GPU performance too. But let's just suppose that Apple could double the GPU cores from 8 to 16 in the new M chip. GPUs are specifically built to maximize use of multiple cores, so we can assume a more linear performance increase in this case. Using Geekbench 5's Metal Framework test, my M1 Mini managed a score of 21,982. So for our theoretical argument's sake, what if we could double that score to 43,964? How would that compare to the top GPU in the 16-inch Intel MacBook Pro? Well, let's consult Geekbench's Metal Benchmarks chart. And here we can see that the average score for the 5600M GPU is 40,966. So we can probably conclude that if Apple can double the GPU cores, then they'll have a chip that can go into a new 16-inch MacBook Pro and perform at least as well as the best GPU option available for the previous model, the Intel model. Now, as we said earlier, it's not going to be enough to compete with that top 5700 XT GPU option in the iMac, but it will be better than the other GPU options, the Radeon Pro 5300 and the 5500 XT and not too far behind the Radeon Pro 5700, so it's only really that top GPU model that it can't replace. Another option open to Apple is that they could bin the new chips to provide several variants, perhaps have one with two additional performance cores and four additional GPU cores to provide a performance difference between different models. Perhaps the 16-inch MacBook Pro gets the full fat version, whereas the 14-inch gets a cut-down chip that sits between the entry-level M1 and the top-end M chip. Now, Apple will need to do some work on the M1's limitations. We'd like to see fixes for the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi issues, which some have experienced. I'd like to see the USB ports able to run an external SSD at full speed. And I think many users will expect at least four USB 4 or Thunderbolt ports on the new notebooks and the larger iMac, and have the ability to drive more than one external display without having to resort to workarounds. It'd be pretty good if Apple brought eGPU support to the M platform as well. At the end of the day, we just don't know exactly what Apple will bring. Speculating is fun, and as geeks, we're excited to see what comes next. I think that when we look at Apple's business and marketing needs, we consider their range of machines, and consider what's realistically possible with an evolution of the M1 chip, the conclusions that we've drawn are probably pretty reasonable. Uh, but I'm sure that some of you out there will disagree with my prediction, uh, and that's fine. Please, let us know in the comments what you think is possible, what are you looking forward to in the next M chip? And will there be just one chip or will we have different versions, do you think, with cut down performance? Whatever Apple choose to do, it's sure to be impressive and it's a great time to be a computer geek. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, maybe I did enough to earn a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you wish. And 
please, why not support the channel? It only costs you one click of the subscribe button. In any case, I hope to see you again soon for some more Geekery.